Hey everyone, welcome to another episode of Ask Firebase. I'm your host for today, David East, and I'm going to be covering... Wait, wait, wait. You're not David East. What do you mean? I'm, I'm playing David East, am I not? No. I'm confused. I thought the whole premise is that we have people playing a character David East, right? We had Lawrence, I think Lawrence was a David East. And before that we had Todd, we had Mike. Mike was a good David East. I think he was the third David East. And before that we had the, the little guy, the one with the skateboard. Who, who, who was that? That was the actual David East. Are you sure? Yeah. So I'm gonna be me today answering Firebase questions. That's right. Oh. <laughs> Hey everyone, welcome to another episode of the Ask Firebase show. My name is Frank, or for those of you who follow me on Twitter, Puff, and I'm gonna be your host for today. <laughs> the first question is from Twitter and it's from user tutor for Dev. How do I create a user with an email and a password through the Firebase CLI, the command line tools? And that's a great question. We actually just added a new command to the Firebase tools that allows you to import a whole set of users with a single command. You now have auth colon import, and you can import a CSV file containing all user information in one go. Let's have a look at the link below, and you can see that we have a lot of information, like a lot of fields that you can have in your CSV file, where you can specify the user information, like the email address, their full name, and of course their salted and decrypted password. So if you have all of these users already from another system, you have them exported somewhere, you just take the CSV file and you upload it into Firebase Authentication with the Firebase CLI auth colon import command. Great question. Now that I know that I actually get to be myself, this next question comes from Stack Overflow. I read all the Firebase questions there. And this one is from Boosranur. I hope I pronounced that correctly. How do I retrieve data from Firebase without having to use a data snapshot? That's a great question. Unfortunately, on Android, the easiest way that you can retrieve data from Firebase is really by using the data snapshot. Right? We have an SDK, and with that SDK, you attach to the database, and you get a data snapshot of all the data that you requested and of all changes to that data. This is really by far the easiest way. But if you really don't want to use a data snapshot, you can use the Firebase REST API. Now I understand that when you just get started with Firebase, it might be a bit tricky to start using the SDK. And that's why we have some great material out there, including the Firebase documentation, but also our brand new course on Udacity called Firebase in a Weekend. Follow the link. Ooh, next question. And it's from, let's see, from Rancho Software. How do you model many-to-many -many relationships in the Firebase database? And that's a great and very common question. It's so common that I actually already answered it on Stack Overflow. So let's have a look what I said there. If you do a relational database and you have a many-to-many -many relationship, then you're typically gonna have, let's say if we have two entities, contractors and companies like you have, Rancho, then you're gonna have three tables, right? You have a table of contractors, you have a table of companies, and then you have your many-to-many -many table that connects the two together. In the Firebase database, it's somewhat similar, but it's also different. We're still gonna have a list of contractors and we're gonna have a list of companies. So those are the same. But now, instead of having a single many-to-many -many table, we'll actually have a list of company contractors. So that's for every company, the contractors for that company, and a list of contractor companies. So this is the other way around. We reverse the logic. So this is for every contractor, we have a list of their companies. You store the information twice, but it allows you to look it up very efficiently. Because now once you know the contractor, right, you can find the contractor's information in the contractor's list, and then you can find the contractor's companies by going to contractor companies, and then the contractor ID under that, and then you just have the list of their company IDs. It's similar to how you do this on a relational database, but it's also slightly different. This will take time to get used to, so, so don't worry about it too much. It's very normal that you have to get used to this. That's why we have some great extra resources for all of you who come from SQL to actually learn about Firebase. We have a video series recorded by David East that is called Firebase for SQL Developers. We have the link below here, and I highly recommend that you check it out, because David, in addition to explaining the details of many-to-many -many relationships, he covers many more details, like how you do advanced querying, how you actually can do searches on Firebase, and many of the other things that you are gonna encounter as you transition from a SQL world to Firebase's NoSQL world. Great question, Rancho. This is the official clap thingy. Take 15. That thing is so Hollywood. I'm gonna be channeling my inner uh, Demi Lovato here. The next question is from Frank's mom. That sounds cool. The question is, uh, I hardly ever see you anymore, Frank. How can I see more of you? That's a great question, mom. And actually, I have the perfect answer for you. 
because we just released a new Firebase course on Udacity called Firebase in a Weekend. And the good thing, mom, is that you actually learn not just about Firebase, but you also get to see more of me if you take this course. In that course, you learn everything about Firebase in just a weekend. So you learn about the Firebase real-time database, Firebase notifications, Firebase authentication. You will learn about remote config, and you can learn it for either Android or iOS. So whichever platform you prefer, we have the course for you. Great question, mom. I really like that one. And with that last question, we reach the end of this episode. And you know what? It wasn't even as bad as I thought it would be. Maybe I even like this. Who knows? I might do more. If you like this episode, be sure to hit the like button below and subscribe. If you want to learn more about Firebase, check out the Udacity course, Firebase in a Weekend. It's actually the most all-encompassing way that you can learn about Firebase for iOS or Android. Then also be sure to check out the other episodes of the Ask Firebase. If you have any questions, be sure to ask them on your social media of your choosing with the hashtag Ask Firebase, because that's how we find you. That's all we have time for today. Thanks for joining. I'll see you next time. Can, can, you do, can you do this with a Russian accent? <laughs> really? Please don't use that. <laughs> 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 <laughs>